Hi everybody, Instructor Phil here, welcome back. Um, today, for the digital drawing class, I just want to show you a couple basics for sketching and drawing, and this is pretty much the direction we've been moving into the whole class, is that I'm trying to, some of you have had basic drawing class, you need to really strengthen your drawing ability, and we're never taught to understand anything about how a shape works. And the truth about drawing and good designers is that um, you can pretty much draw anything out of your head if you understand how shape works. You can draw anything out of your imagination because all you have to do is be able to draw the shape in the correct perspective. And so that means you have to have a little bit of a knowledge of perspective. I also teach that, you know, the advanced uh, applied perspective class where we cover 80 topics in a semester, right? But just for right now, we'll just cover some real basics, okay? So what we do know is that we always have a horizon line in our scene. And what we're going to do on this particular uh, example here is, um, oops, wow, that would get, hold on. My uh, screen just totally vamped out. Let me rotate that back there for a minute. The touch screen setting was on on the Cintiq. And trust me, don't ever buy a Cintiq with that touch setting because it really doesn't, it's not that interactive. It doesn't work that great. Just get one without it. I don't even use it. Um, it's okay, but anyway, so this is what I'm going to do. What I wanted to do, and I, I did this the other day, I was talking to a couple of you guys is we're going to basically do a couple sketches where we are drawing. Um, we're going to create a grid and two-point perspective. Now, what happens a lot of times is when students are working, they create a grid like this. Okay, I'm just going to rough, I'm going to freehand this in really quick. Actually, maybe I'll use my ruler just for quick. So you get a couple straight lines. So what tends to happen is students will do this, is they will draw um, a grid roughed out and then they'll come in and they'll start basically sketching a rough idea the problem is is that most students do not keep their vanishing points at this distance most students tend to do this they tend to come in and place two vanishing points pretty close together like this okay and then what happens is they come in here and start to draw their subject matter tends to be a little bit larger okay and what happens is when your subject matter is larger like this and your vanishing points are closer, you get something that I call a fan effect. And the reason why I call it a fan effect is this, is your vanishing points are so much closer, okay? There's a high level of distortion that's happening from the object to, towards that vanishing point. And so at, let's say if I was coming in here and I was starting to sketch some type of a bug. I'm just making up some bug out of my head right now. Let's just say that's face. Let's say there was a midsection here that came down type of thing. Let's say there's a base here. Let's say then there's something that angles back, goes up this way. Okay. What happens is that I get this, this high transition from here to here that has a lot of convergence happening. And that is happening because of this. VP1 and VP2 are too close together. And so when they're too close together, what that basically means is I need my subject matter to be smaller like this. Because if my subject matter is not small enough, I'm going to create that fan effect because I have the vanishing points too close and I draw the subject matter too large, which means I get that high level of convergence that's happening very quickly. So in order to avoid that, there are sort of two really good drawing solutions or techniques I'm going to show you. So if I'm working on a show, and my responsibility is, is to draw props and mechs, let's say. Okay, let's say robots, bugs, whatever. One of these methods is where <laughs> I come over to the side. I'm going to show you this right now. And I'm going to have my vanishing point way off the page. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a measuring line on the side of the page. Okay, I'm going to zoom into it. And I'm basically going to have all the angles represented. So let me show you how that works. So let's say I decide... I'm going to have my frame right about here, okay? Hold on a minute. Just decided I want to put that on another layer so I don't lose my grid. There we go. So let's say I'm going to have my frame right here that I'm going to be working in. And everything I'm going to do is going to exist in this frame right here. So a cool little technique that you can do is you can come over and you put this little measuring line right there. It's a line right next to the outside of the frame. You then come over to a vanishing point and you do this. And you put a series of lines that are, that are connecting, that are basically etching and hitting that line. Oops, 
me back up there. My ruler slipped for a minute. There we go. And the reason why I do this is once I get into my drawing, all I have to do is now look at my little notation line on the side, right? Let me do it for this side as well. Okay. So let me come over here. Let me just sort of zoom in. Give me a second. Let me get this side down. Now what's really important here is you can see how the line is changing. The angle of the line is changing and altering based off of the vanishing point and the distance to that vanishing point. So technically you could do this and you could have a vanishing point that's really far away. I like to teach this because I think it's great for use in a sketchbook and it's just a, another important simple solution for a drawing method. Okay, So now I said you guys would be zoomed in. So imagine if we were zoomed in like this now and we're drawing, I can't see my vanishing point, can I? I can't. However though I have my little measuring line on the side there. So let's say I was going to come in here right now and I was going to draw a box um, and I start to draw this. I can follow that line and see is that line the right angle? If I do it like that, see? Is that line in the right angle? No, it's not. That, it's totally off. I can compare it to the little lines on my measuring line there and I can see. So now if I hit undo and go back a couple steps, okay? And if I come back here, I could see basically I'm lining up my ruler that in order to have a line right here, that line would have to intersect right there and be matching. You see how that works? So you end up using this little measuring line on the side to guide you through your drawings so you can get accurate and correct perspective. Okay, so that's a really simple one. And you'll notice as I get up closer towards that horizon line, my line starts to change because as I get closer to that horizon line, I'm almost going to be uh, parallel to it. I shouldn't even say that we're parallel, but I'm going to be almost level to it. Once I hit the horizon line, I will just literally be straight on it like this. Then once I go above that horizon line, the line starts to go up. So now what I'm doing with my ruler to draw these lines is I'm look. you can't see this, but I'm just looking over here to see where my ruler is lining up. And then I'm just drawing a line. I'm just making sure that any line that I draw I, like I'm going to draw a line over here to the right side. As I draw that line right there, I have my ruler placed right there and I'm looking at the angle. This always sort of guarantee, guarantees you an accuracy to having your lines being correct. So if I decide to come in here now and start drawing a base shape that I'm going to draw a giant bug in, all I have to do is come over very quickly, throw my ruler down. Now I almost did this. See that? That angle's way off, isn't it? I have to draw that angle. I'm going to be a more about an angle like that to be correct because I can see how that line fits between this line and that line right there, right? That's important for me. And I can come back here, do the same thing. That line matches that one. Okay, and this is just a really simple, easy way. Now, you can see the errors in my grid there, right? I drew it freehand really fast, but that's okay for right now. I want to teach you this technique because I use this all the time in my sketchbook when I'm out drawing, is if I have a vanishing point. So right now my vanishing point, because I'm zoomed into this, I'm going to walk over about four feet over here, is way over here. I don't want to have a giant ruler to measure over every time to be going back to my vanishing point to make sure my drawing's right. Okay, So that's sort of one method right there that I wanted to show you real quick, right? The other method that I showed you guys, let me zoom back out of this, the other day is if you come in here, let me, give me a second, I'm going to go to my eraser here, and some of these lines were bent, and I don't want them to be bent, so I'm just going to redraw them super quick, okay? My bad on that, I should have done it freehand. I do that in my sketchbook sometimes, just freehand lines in, but that's a little different, that's what sketching's for. On, in this particular case, I want to have a grid that's going to be pretty exact. So I have two vanishing points right here. It's just going to take me a couple minutes to come back in here and throw these lines back in, okay? Going off of that vanishing point. There are times when I do both of these processes at the same time. There's nothing wrong with that, okay? I'm going to come in here. And this, folks, you know, I get students all the time that are like, yeah, I want to be a concept artist. You know, I want to transfer to Art Center. I want to do this. I want to do that. 
you are never going to get anywhere if you don't have the ability to have solid draftsmanship skills. That's sort of like drawing 101. You know, if you can't draw correctly, and I get this all the time where students are like, yeah, I could draw, bro, I'm good. And then I look at their stuff and it's all out of perspective, it's all wonky, and there's major issues with it. Okay, if you don't have draftsmanship abilities, you're limited. This is the base requirement to go forward. Now, what I showed you guys the other day was this sort of trick where we come on our grid. We're basically going to be drawing very close into our grid, like about right here. Okay, and I'm just going to copy and paste that right now. So I copied it. I'm going to close this, add another layer here, hit paste into there. And if you look, I basically have, now if I scale this up, I have a rough grid that I'm going to be drawing on. Okay, and what's cool about this, now I only have a couple lines there. I could come over here. Oops, let's go back to my pen. One second, there it is. Okay, so if I need to fill in a couple of the little lines in there, that's easy, it's no problem. I can see between each line and I know how it fits. So look, I basically have a rough grid now to draw on. And that's huge. I basically just zoomed in. I have that foundation to give me an understanding of basically what's taking place. So I'm just going to go ahead and come over this. I like to frame everything that I do. It allows me to see what's where. Okay. So where this leads us to is that now if I decide to come over here and sketch up a bug, okay, I have a grid plane to understand I'm zoomed in. I'm basically drawing, okay, so if you think about it, I'm basically drawing a subject matter very small on a grid with large vanishing points, or vanishing points further away from each other, right? I'm trying to avoid having the vanishing points too close. So now I can come in here and I can grab some reference. So just to mention this to you guys, there's this wonderful software that's called PureRef, right? So watch, if I open up Pure Ref right now, Pure Reference, I can come over, drag my reference inside of that. Um, let me do that again. So see this? Pure Ref is a window that floats on top of all my other software. So let's say I, I just grabbed that bug reference there real quick. And then if I right click on it, I can tell it where I want it to be. I can minimize it, maximize it, so on. Um, I think it's a little bit more friendly on the Mac. You can move it around a little bit easier. Okay, but look, I have um, transparent always on top. Um, give me a second. What was the way? Hold on. To close it, we just come over here and there it is. Cancel. Give me a second. All right, sorry. In order to move the pre ref, uh, uh, the pure ref window. And download it for free it works on a Mac or on a PC right so um, here I, I have to move it when I first open it and decide and then I could resize it then when I'm done all I have to do is I have to grab my reference and then put it on if you want to close it because like right there I just put it over my reference like a bonehead all I have to do is come over here and hit close and then the window is gone so let's say for some reason these are the references I want I come over here I click pure ref you can download right okay it's there I can grab my reference photos, I drag them inside, and you see I have a cloud, and I can use the scroll button to scroll back, and then I could select an item like this, and then I can scroll into it, and it's really cool, because now look at what happens when I go back to my sketchbook window, it sticks up on top, and so I can have a window open of reference, I could be flipping around, and then I could be looking at that as I'm working, so you can download that for home. Um, I'm going to install it on our other machines, but right now if you download it, it'll uninstall because of the... The, the software protector on there, right? So now I can look at that bug and I could come over here and I could draw him and he actually fits part of my perspective here. So one of the first things that I like to do whenever I start is I have this layer here, which is my grid. I like to draw on top of that so I can lower my grid down and the opacity as I continue sketching here. So what I'm gonna do now is just really quickly with my ruler, I'm gonna block in the shapes that I see that bug with. Okay, that bug to me, when I looked at it, and I'm using the guiding lines of my, um, my grid under here, I see this rectangular sort of box shape like this. Okay, first thing that I'm gonna see in here, right? That's it. I'm gonna draw through the shape real quick so I understand what's happening on this back side. Hold on, let me make sure I lost my, there we go, okay. 
So now I could draw, I've drawn through, I see how everything connects. Okay, what I like to do is I like to always start with a center line. It helps me envision what I'm drawing. So as I continue to add shapes to this, and I look at the back of this bug, and the back of this bug curves backwards, right? Well, look, I already have this light sort of grid center line that's right there. Do you see that? That light blue line. So now I can come back and see where that bug curves. I can come back here and say, hey, I'm going to curve to that line this way, curve to this line this way, like that. So now I put that shape in. My bug's not going to be a blocky shape. It's going to have a rounded tier to it. So now I already have that middle point there. I can draw that middle point up, and I'm going to come over here like this. I'm just going to put a little simple cylinder that has the roundness of that bug in there. Then I'm going to sort of bring this back. I know where that line ends here, and here's the middle point. So I can make all these adjustments very quickly because I have that center line in there. So now I could come over here and just say, hey, if I were to cut through this section, I would have that little section there. And now if I were to connect that line to this dot here and then bring that line forward, to right there. I basically now drawn off part of the top part of my bug there, right? So let's say I want to draw under that belly. Okay, so I'm looking, the belly looks like to me like it rounds a little bit, right? So I'm going to come back here. I have that sort of, I was a little off there. I have that line right there. I'm going to drop that center line down to about right here. Now I might decide you don't have to make your bug exactly like the photo. You might decide to exaggerate a little bit or add some other elements to it, right? But from this point, I like thinking of any of you ever seen a model plane or the old wood model planes they'd make, you can cut it in half and see part of the fuselage. So whenever you're doing a drawing, stop for a minute and think about what the fuselage is in the middle of it. That's what we call the core structure. And that core structure is basically the construction of the drawing that you're doing. And if that core structure is off, your drawing is going to be off. So now I could come back here and do this. I can curve this down. I could curve this down in here, all right? And then I could even receive that back. Now, I notice the bug gets fatter back there, right? So I'm going to go ahead, and what I just did here, I'm going to do in the back. I'm going to drop another line there. And I know if I connect from here to here, and then draw a light line across, that's basically the same base part in the back there, all right? However, though, it gets a little bit thicker. So then I could come back here. Let's say I decide to come to about here, go across. Okay, I'm going to make this a little bit wider, let's say. So I'm going to decide to pull this out and bring it a little bit fatter. So I drew a line from here. I'm going to go up to there. I'm going to go across. So now I understand what point I'm drawing from. I'm going to go from here, make this a little bit fatter, then around it to here, and then I'm going to round this up. So I'm basically almost like cutting into my fuselage, right? But the great thing about this now is as I connect the exterior lines and say the back to here, connected to here, this connected to here, then he gets a little bit thinner and comes into here, okay? I'm basically creating part of that simple foundation of my bug in the structure that he exists in, okay? I'm going to come in here. I grab the... Um, uh-oh, getting a lag there. That's because of the recorder. So I grab the, hold on, why is it not working? Of course, it goes right over to your ref. Hold on, i got to close pure ref now. That's all right. I don't need it anymore. I know what the reference is. I, I looked at it. There we go. I wanted to see the the settings down on this. I wanted to get my eraser up. That's why it wasn't. If I just hit reset, it's about 35, hit save. So now I have that fuzzy eraser. I could come in here and I could start to erase very lightly some of the lines that I had that were my box line. See that? Okay. So now that I have that box gone, but look at what I have. Let me not to, well, we lost the reference photo. <laughs> Hold on, let me bring up PRF again. There it is. Drag the bug in there that quick. Okay, now I can bring this back over here. So now I can look at my drawing, and it's like now I'm sort of losing that shape. Do you see that? I'm losing the box shape, but I still have solid construction that's in there that's going to make the rest of my guy here. So now let's continue drawing off of this. That box shape is really pivotal, though. That's the part of the drawing.
that allows me to get to this part with the cylinders and stuff. As you get more advanced and you get better with perspective, you'll be able to just draw a cylinder like this. You'll be able to come in and you'll just be able to say, hey, I'm going to have this shape. I have a center line. And I'm just going to split that. I'm going to come over here. But that gets a little bit later in your draftsmanship when you start drawing through and you basically get to the point where you can take your primitives and just start cutting them in half. It takes a little bit more time to get there. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to come over here. I want to look at that head shape. He has sort of a round sphere, but then he has this large sort of protective element on the back there. So I want to come in here. I want to think about how I want to do that. I'm going to draw a line that comes this way because there's a distance from here to the head, right? So I'm going to come forward to about here. And I'm going to imagine somewhere about right here, I'm going to have a sphere, okay, that is that front sort of head shape. And then I, now I want to come in here and draw this sort of big blocky element. So I'm prefer, I like to look at this as a large cube. And I'm going to come over here, and I, I like to draw with a center line. So I'm going to think about a center line that's coming down here. Here's my front. There's the back side. And now off of the center line, he's going to have this large element that goes backwards. So I'm going to draw a center line that comes back like this. Now, if I drop that center line down to here, see that? The center line's going up at an angle, and I drop it down. That's sort of like my cut through right now. So then I could come back in here. This curves a little bit and comes down. But before I do that, let me, get, let me draw the widths. So I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to draw this part out. So it looks like I'm going to exaggerate it and just pull it out past the body a little bit. And I'm going to curve this back into here. So do you see right now how I have this, this semi-circle uh, shape in there? I need to draw that on the other side. Well, there's, I showed you a way to do this. You could do proportional division to get that in there. If you don't want to do proportional division because you're afraid you're going to make a mess, you can sort of eyeball it. And what I mean by eyeballing it is I know if I do it about right there, that feels right, right? Now I can put that curve in because I understand how those parts connect through. So now I could come in here and say this body part curves down here, comes down, and wraps to there. So now I can do it on the other side and see what I'm going to see. It's going to curve down to here and come down. Look at where that curve point is. If I bring a line over right now, this is where it curves down. That's where it curves in. I receive that back to the other side, and I can see that's where my line curves in. And then it's going to hit right about here and curve down. So I'm going to see just a little small point of that in there. So as that line comes down here, now you got to remember this was sort of a straight top, but then it curves. So um, maybe this, let me just draw that the, the, the see-through part to the other side. It'll curve down to about there, and then that'll curve back. And then I have this sort of, oops, my bad, my pen slipped there. I have my center line coming down the middle here like this. My center line is important because it allows me to see lines overlapping other lines. I like to think of them as rubber bands overlapping shape or pieces of yarn being dropped onto something, right? Now that I have that head shape in there, it's a little confusing for me to see. So I'm going to come in and, oops, that's the eraser that I don't like to use that much. Go to the fuzzy eraser, and I'm going to come in here and then lightly erase some of the underdrawing here. So I can see how that head shape is working in there. All right? All right. So that gives me a better feel of how that head shape is connecting. All right? Now I have, there's like a little part of that that wraps over that sphere, right? So I'm going to come in here real quick. Let me make sure I'm back on. And I'm going to sort of do that. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to wrap and pull. Imagine the shape coming over a little bit, let's say like that. And then I'm going to draw a line of that coming back. And I'm going to sort of draw this part that might go around part of that head. And now I need to connect this to the part of the body. Now, I did, I did this upper shell to the body, right? So I'm going to erase that little guy there because, remember, I have that curved line that comes in and comes down, right? Now I want to get underneath. So I have these lines already here. I'm going to drop the line down a little bit. And I'm going to connect from here going back. And then I'm going to connect these side lines to this point here. Like that. And then I'm not going to be able to see the other dotted connection that would go through there. And I'm just going to have a line that connects up to the front. Okay, I'm going to erase a little bit of this in here so I can see it a little bit more. I 
like that, okay? So now I have that protective front. I've made some changes to mine, that's okay. I'm gonna put, uh, there's a detailed part, which I can do a little bit later, which would have these little stripes that are in here, right? So those stripes will help me. I might just throw one on the top here that comes down this way. It's gonna help to show the form of what's happening in my bug here, right? So I have one stripe there. I might have another stripe on the side. Comes this way. Might have another stripe that drops down here a little bit. Okay? All right. Now I'm gonna get into my bug and I'm gonna, let's do the legs really quick here. This is the part where students tend to make a couple mistakes. The body's pretty easy. It's a series of parts connecting to other parts, right? Uh-oh. This is my body so far. Oops, and jump again. Okay, so now when I get to the legs, here's the important part. Okay, you have to understand the distance from the base of the body to the ground plane so you have enough room to get the legs to fit in. I drew this body right now off the grid. If I have the base of this body connecting right here to this part of the grid, that animal or bug is not above the grid right now. So what I need to do is when I look at their legs, look at the distance of the legs here. If I draw a center line down and over, the lowest legs are almost the height of the body. You see that? So let me draw this on another layer on top here so I can just delete it real quick. If I look at this center line from here to about, let's just say right here. Actually, I, hold on a minute. It's supposed to be yeah, to about right there. And then that's the center line coming down to here. That's the height of my body. The legs are about that height. So I need to come now this way and measure and then stop about right there. That's where my legs are gonna be landing, hitting the ground plane. So now with that little dotted line, I'm gonna come back over here. I'm gonna switch back to my blue. So I know that I'm gonna come over here and do one leg real quick. I'm gonna put a sphere in here, right? I have a, le this leg sort of comes out, down and over. So it comes out from the body. Well, where's the center mass of the body? It's right here, right? And if I come over here, I can tell the other sphere is gonna be right about in here. If I draw a line through, I can see where they connect, okay? So the leg's gonna come out from the body first, right? So I'm gonna come over here, find this middle point, find a circle. I'm gonna draw the leg coming out from the body, right here. Then it sort of dips down. So then the leg's gonna come down this way, right? And then it comes back over. So then I'm gonna come back to that center point then draw the leg coming back over. And then he has like a little base foot right there, okay? Now I can see where that matches up. Do you see that? To his height. He's this high above the ground. So now I know if I carry and draw this over to the other side, look, I could even do proportional division if I wanted to. That leg exists now inside that shape. I can cross real quick, find the middle, back over here and I know that the other leg is going to be fitting in about that shape right there. The other leg is going to be foreshortened though, a reverse foreshortened. It's going to be foreshortened going away from me. So from this little center mass right here, get that in there because that was a little off. Right there. And this is how I measure now. See where the leg comes out? Draw a line across. Draw a line across for here. See that? So I know I know that I'm coming out from that center point. So I'll put it in red, this center point right here. So I'm gonna come over to that sphere that I have now. And where that little circle is, it's gonna be the same one over there. And I'm gonna come out and that leg is gonna go to about right there. See that? Then that leg goes this way, right? How do, you wanna know how to get that curve? Remember the top of a house? Bring the center line down where that line hits that center line. And now I'm going to come back over here and draw that coming this way. See how I did that? If I flip that over, I'm drawing the roof of a house like this. Find the center. So I need to know where that leg comes down. I drop it to the center line of the body. I now receive that one. I know where it's going to end because I drew a line going across. And then I know it's going to drop down and then the foot's gonna go forward and hit the end. So even on this, 
see this angle right here? I just bring that over. Oh, and it hits that red dot again. So now I come back to that red dot. I draw that where that ends. Then I have the base of the foot coming in about right there. Okay, That's how my leg exists in perspective on the other side. I use my little theory, well not theory, it's just common sense, right, on how to figure out that angle. So I'll draw on top of it real quick on this layer here, just to remind you. If this angle right here, I want to know, I know where the leg ends on this side, I don't know the angle. So that's where I drop down to the center line, I come down, find a dot, I come back, and then I recede these lines back down to that center line right there. Okay, that's important, that's how I figure out the other side. Now, my bug is drawn correctly in terms of the body and the legs. Now I come back over and I do the other thing. So let's say this other leg, I need to decide where I want it to land. Let's say I want this other leg to land, this one's out a little further, that one's in. So now instead of this one, this one ended here, let's say I want the other one to end right here. Okay, hold on. It's on the wrong layer. There it is, right there. Okay? I'm going to do the same thing now. This is where it gets confusing. Okay? Is I have to find a center line for where this leg connects. So watch. See that round mass there? I'm going to come over and put the round mass right here. The leg is going to come out here. I have to draw a dotted line and find the center. Here's the center. Now I need to go up. So I'm going to use that as a measuring line. I'm going to draw that leg coming out. So I'm going to draw a leg up there to the center. I find the center. Now I can draw that leg coming out right here. Okay. And I'm going to match this leg. The leg is going to recede back in. So when it recedes back in, I'm going to draw that dotted line going back down a little bit more in the opposite direction. Let's say I decide to pick it a little closer like that. This leg is going to go to here. Now remember, I'm trying to get this leg to land before that line. That's where the other foot was, right? So I'm going to get that. Now the leg has to come back the other way. I'm going to come back to this dotted line right here, which was the center, right? And then I'm going to draw that leg coming back right here. I'm going to end it there. And I'm going to draw the foot and come out and end it there. So my foot now recedes that much more of a distance before that one, okay? So all I have to do now is I have to draw that leg on the other side to make sure I draw it correctly. So first I come through, I know where the center is. I take this distance from here to here, and I put that through to the other side. So I know where the leg is going to come out, right? I take my line, match up to my grid. I know where the knee is going to be. So if I come and draw a line from here to here, that's going to be the other leg coming out on the other side which I can't see, it's behind the body, but then it's going to curve inward, right? So when it curves inward, remember I drew that center line down, it came to there, so now I'm going to come to that point, come back over to here, draw that leg coming down, and I can check to see where it ends on the grid. It's going to end right there. And then it's going to come forward a little bit, right? So now I'm going to come over here, draw a line where it hits that ground right in there. And where it comes forward, I went off of that point right there. Does that make sense? So I come back to that point, the center mass of that point, and then I draw the leg coming down. And it's going to hit to right here. And then I'm going to have a little bit of the foot that comes out like that. So now I have correctly drawn what the other leg is going to look like on the other side. Now so I don't confuse you, I'm going to pretend I'm going to erase half of my bug. I'm going to come over here real quick and I'm going to draw a cut through of what I just did. Uh-oh. Stop. That's the recorder. It's eating up all the memory. Let me go back. Okay, stop. There we go. So I'm going to just draw a rough cut view if you imagine this, okay? I had... This is going to be a see-through bug of my... I mean, excuse me a see-through, cut-through of my bug right there where I just was, okay? I know my bug is this high above the ground, all right? So I know the leg is going to be coming out from this point right here, okay? 
what I have to do is I need to find the angle just like the top of a house. So I have to understand where the center line of that bug is, how it goes up and how it goes down. Because now if I decide to bring this leg out at this angle, I draw a line back to here, and that dot right here is the angle at which that leg is transferring. You see that? So then if I end the leg right here and then decide to bring the leg, bug legs always go back and they sort of zigzag. And then let's say this one drops, hits the ground, and then the foot comes out this way. Okay? So you see how I did that? I just have to match the angles off my center line. So uh, angle one here is that red dot, right? Now, angle two here, the leg going this way, I just drop my center line down and I draw a dotted line and where it hits right there, I know where it's hitting. And then when it hits the ground here, it's just going, uh, excuse me, when it hits here and goes, I just draw a yellow line from here and that's actually landing just a little bit below that line. Does that make sense how I'm doing that? Everyone with me? If not, I'll, everyone good on that? Semi? That's right. So look here, I'll draw it simply like this. Here's my center line. If I have, let's say I have something here and something here. If, if I have something that extrudes at that angle, to find that angle, I know where the center line is, right? I just draw a dotted line matching that direction where that hits. I know now where to take it through the other side, right? And then here, all I have to know is where the leg ends. So when I come to the other side, and then now I drop through, I know where that leg is right there. Do you see that? It's basically the same principle of the house. See how that house roof is there? I'm just drawing a part of it. Does that make sense? Okay. Let me back up a couple steps, though. But now, bug legs do this. They zigzag, right? So now when the bug leg, if I design, I don't need to look at a point now. I'm just going to draw the, the darn leg in. Once I draw the leg in, then I come back and go, okay, that dotted line has to go down. That's my center line. That's why center lines are so important. So now, if I bring this dotted line down, all I have to do is draw that dotted line back through the other leg. But then what do I need to do? Anyone? I need to understand where the other leg ends. So all I do is just draw a line back to my vanishing point like that. Now I know it ends right here. I know th the angle of that leg, so I know that leg will be right there. See how that works in perspective? Just using the center line. So now, let's say I decide I want my leg to really come out like this and then go when it hits the ground. Same principle. I'm going to come over here. I'm just going to draw a little dotted line. And then where I hit that center line, I hit right there. See that? I'm going to come back through now. And I'm going to draw that right through the other side. Right there. Okay? And then the leg comes out about so far. So I can just sort of eyeball that. And I know it's right there. See that? I'm just mirroring one side to the other. The difference is you need to think of it like this. All of you are educated enough to do that in what I would call a front orthographic view. So if here's my front orthographic view right now, okay. if I came over here and if I said, Elena, I want you to replicate that curve on the other side, how would you do it? Well, it would be really easy. All you'd have to do is draw a couple lines indicating where the curve is and transfer that information to the other side. So we would know that if we draw a line right here, that's where the curve starts. And then if we measured right here, we would know the distance from here to here and then down this space here to here is where the curve matches. So if I measure that on the other side and draw a line, and then I come over and I already have the thickness there, all I, in, all I need to then do is connect the dots. See that? It's connecting dots. Then I know where the bend of the curve starts. So the bend of the curve is right about there. If I draw a line over to this side, now I measure this distance from here to here. Come over, I put that here to here. I draw that line down. 
I know exactly where it's going to hit right here. And then I can just come over and just go like that. And then I do the same thing down here. I know where it tucks in. In fact, I could even see, I could measure the distance from here to here. And if I did that, I have that much space on the end. So I can see where that line comes in. And then basically, you've solved the whole answer. Even though I'm a little jittery. Oh my god, that looks horrible. <laughs> okay, yeah, <laughs> that's all right. I'm sitting here on my Sentik drawing sideways and not floating with it, but um, obviously I made a couple little mistakes there. But of course, that's why, here, I'll do it again for you. I'll do it 100% accurate, right? I was gonna just put on the, look, I use a mirror function, there we go. So this is how you do it, right? That's how you do it, perfect on the other side, no, okay? But you understand the point of what I'm getting at, right? I'm sorry, I'm just a little, that's, I don't know if it's three quarter or what. If I had it there, I'm just, but that, I've had to do this before, and if you need to get it exact, I, I don't like to get into all this detail and measurement. I just like to eyeball it. But anyway, see what I'm getting at. That's how I replace it on the other side. If I want to spend the time and blot out the measurements, but what I'm getting at with all this, and the reason why I'm showing it to all you guys, is that's just that's the front view. And when I do it in perspective, it's what's happening right here. Okay? It's just turned. I've taken an object and I've turned it into perspective. And the reason why I call this, I always like to simplify things so you can remember it. The roof of the house, right? If I have a house and I know that this is my house here to here, right? even draw that right today I need to finish my coffee I think so that's my house right in order to draw the angle of the house the roof I just have to know where the center line is that's it I find the middle I have the center line I draw a line up and then now I connect both dots to each corner that's it that's the exact same principle we're doing here the only difference is is that here our house starts down here, and then we're drawing a couple multiple lines. We drew a line there, we figure that out, we went out the center line, we drew it down this way, okay? That's it, does that make sense? I'm not hearing any yeses, it's scaring me. Yes. Good, okay, just making sure. So now when I come over here to my little drawing that you guys will be doing for us, right? This is how I measure out and figure out how the legs are. This is how I know I can see that leg on the other side, this is why I had you guys in your last exercise do subtractive shapes and why I showed you proportional division is so you can figure out how to draw something onto the other side. We call that drawing through the shape. Okay, Understanding the construction and how to draw through, I can't begin to tell you how many students don't do this. The students that don't do this, guess what, ha guess what happens? You show your work to me, whether it be character design, a prop, an environment, within the first two seconds I can look at it and go, perspective's off. So if someone is gonna hire you, we have this old ex expression that I've used, I've heard people say it in the industry before, which is, your worst drawing shows me your best skills. Okay, so if you show me something simple like a snowmobile or an airplane, and you can't draw the wing correctly on the other side because you don't understand construction or shape, there's an issue, okay? So this is what our next exercise is. Like I said, we're picking up the pace. Eventually, you guys will get to this point where you have to be freehand. You have to be able to do this. You have to be able to go center line there, come down. My leg is going to go out here. It's going to come this way. And then I want to make this leg pop out more. And you can see how much further it's, it pops out, right? You even might decide to do this. You might decide to get technical and where it hits the ground you might decide to make the leg go in an opposite direction like that. There's nothing wrong with that. I can figure that all out. How? I come over here, I find the center line, and then I draw the center line going in the opposite direction, and then I draw the angle of the leg, boom. Now I understand when I draw the other foot, the angle it's gonna be going at, right? So I come over here, I draw through the shape, I find that other side, I draw to my center line, I find that, I know exactly that leg is going to end about there. So now when I draw it through, coming from this point, 
Let me draw that center line for you. Right there. I'll just go ahead. Oops, where am I really going? I'm going to just sketch it in super light right here as well. Okay, now anything I draw, I just find that point for that leg. I bring that leg out. Boom, that leg's right there. Okay, and then the leg is going to come in an angle. It's going to hit. It goes from that point. It's going to come in here. It's going to end there. So I draw a line across. That leg is going to come down and it's going to end. So I'm going to see from that leg right behind this leg that little part. Then the leg veers out this way from that point. You see that? And then I've drawn it on the ground. I know exactly where it's going to end. So I come over here and I draw from that point. And that's it. Now I have that leg on the other side. But then I drew the leg going backwards, right? So I just bring that line forward. I come off of the center line. Okay. The center line's right there. And I'm just going to draw from there. So now I'm going to come from that point. And I'm just basically going to come back here. And I, it's going to go from there and it's going to go back. How do I know where to end it? I just draw a line across there. So now I know exactly, sorry, I don't mean to draw it in red. I meant to do it in blue. I know exactly what that leg is going to look like on the other side. Can you see now what I can see of that leg? There's my construction drawing. Okay. Now the fun part comes. Now with the construction there, where I could basically chisel off some other edges, Sometimes I think that's a more advantage for a lot of you that are learning how to draw because when you learn how to understand chisels and faces, okay, that enables your toning and your shading ability, as you can see it. So if I want to chisel off anything on here, I might decide to say, hey, this is going to be a chiseled line. It's going to come down this way. You know, that's a chiseled face. That's going to recede here. That line might come to here and I might chisel them off this way. So I'm basically putting in different squares and facades and I'm chiseling off my bug, okay, on top of it. So just as a little reminder, when we chisel things off, those of you that learn, uh, that are taking plane and nut, oh, taking figure drawing, one of the things you have to do is you have to draw and understand this guy right here Planimetric head model. Okay. I well, here's a drawing of it. Okay. Well, there was a drawing of it. There it is. I can't find the model. That's called the planimetric head. So that's an important part of understanding how to draw the human figure, and how to understand planes, especially for portraiture. Understanding the angles of the planes that are on the face will give you an indication of of how the light is hitting the face. We can now do the same thing to our prop, insect, car, vehicle, anything that we've done because we've figured out part of the construction. I know that the bridge of the nose and the top of the cheekbone always have highlights on them because I know the angles of those planes. I know that the, your eyes, if I look from here and look back at Nath Nathaniel, right, I can see his eyes are in shadow because the light source is above him to the right and the eyes concave inward, therefore you're always going to have shadows in there, right? That's an important part of your drawing now. So when I close this, I come back and take a look at my bug. All the construction's there and the perspective's there. Maybe I need to drop this down a little bit, come over. I'm going to add another layer in, right? On this new layer now, I could come in and just basically define those shapes up. I can A, draw my bug correctly. I can draw through my bug. Now the rest of it is just understanding you know, all the shapes that might be in there. So if I, well, let's say, I, let's just do a quick demo on the head. Let's say the head, I wanted to have them shaped up a little bit, right? I might come in here and say, oops, this line is receding back. It's going in about that direction. So now if I bring this line down here, bring them down here like this, and then bring them over, that's sort of a plane. Now he has sort of a hard edge that goes into here. That connects, and he connects this way. He goes this way, the body's starting to come out, the body goes to here, then the body tucks down. So now I just connect all those little lines. Okay. This is just another way, you don't have to necessarily do this, it's just another way to understand that if I asked you now to light your bug, you would be able to put a light source on them and figure out the planes that are being hit by light 
because you understand the angles that are sitting on top of the construction. Okay, so now these are all going to converge forward, right? Like that. I understand all those planes right now. Let's say I get to back here. Maybe this plane goes up in this direction here. Goes up, and then maybe it, it goes downward like so. And maybe it comes out a little bit like this. Okay. And then maybe this area pops up, this feeds back. See what I'm getting at here? I'm figuring out all of those little angled planes now. Okay. You don't have to necessarily do this. I'm just showing it to you so you understand it. I prefer to just work like this. I can look at my bug right there and I understand the shapes and the values that are there. So now I can draw a line on top of it. This, I want to see the construction like this. If you want to lightly dim your lines behind it, that's fine. The, the next part to this would be me just sort of putting in little details. So if I want to put in details, it would be me coming with that airbrush tool. Now look at this, guys. I had a lot of you guys doing this. Detail, and you're coming in and putting this huge opaque color. No, it doesn't need that. I'm going to imagine right now my light source is coming in this direction. Actually, you know what? I think I'll do another demo to this to talk about light and the planes being caught by light because I'm already at 51 minutes and I know there's another class that's going to come in here in a little bit. So I'll stop here right now so I can render this out for you guys. Okay. Um, and then I'll do another follow up demo to this one where we start talking about how light works. And here's my big question is how many of you had somebody teach you this in basic drawing? Okay, this is, that's the key problem of understanding how shapes work. Once you understand how to draw the shape, you understand the facades of the shape, you're now going to be able to understand how to light it, which means you can put a light in any room, an artificial or natural light, and you're going to understand how the light is going to be affecting those planes, which means you'll be able to render it. Okay, all right, let me go ahead and stop, and uh, we'll see you back next week. We'll finish up the other part of this demo.